Hello, Chillins on Facebook. Welcome to Storytime Vard. My name is Vard and I'm Frias. I'm your host today. Got one person on Facebook and one person on Instagram. So let me look at the things. Okay. I got this whole setup where it's just like my computer, my phone, a uh, bunch of crazy stuff going down. But we have a lot. Not, I mean, not a lot, a lot to talk to, about today. We do have cool stuff that's happening. So um, I just released a book on Amazon called Murrow Secret. It's a uh, short story. It's only about like 5,000 words. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let me get back on actual story time so I can share the link with everybody. So, woo. Hey, Mary, how's it going? Popping in for a couple minutes. Hi. Oh, wait. Let me show you the uh, <laughs> the Celtics. I might have to take this out pretty soon because it is doing its job. It's very warm. It's very cozy and comfortable. But unfortunately, it's like going to be 80 degrees today. <laughs> so I might take it off in a little bit. But I love it. It is great. So thank you very much, Chris. I love it. Oh, more people on Instagram. Awesome. There's a lot of people on here today. So, Oh, thank you. Thank you for wishing me happy birthday. Thank you. Yes, it is my uh, spooky birthday today. Actually, I'm 31 years old. So that means uh, 31, born in October. This is this is the birthday. You know, this is the year. This is my special year where the magic is supposed to happen. So pretty uh, pretty excited about that. Because <clears throat> um, people told me, like, oh, your golden birthday is the birthday that's the actual day. Like, so mine is October 2nd, so it would be, like, your second birthday. But I'm just like, I wasn't even conscious at two years old. <laughs> Barely conscious at two years old. So that don't count. So the 31st is my golden birthday. It's my spooky birthday. So. Helping you transform into a Boston ne'er-do-well. I, I think that's a ne'er-do-well. But <laughs> yeah, it's great. I really like, like, you guys can see the... Uh, Good old Celtics logo. I'm going to uh, Boston in um, a bunch of places in the near in the area that I'm going there. October 25th. It's gonna be great. I'm gonna hang out with Christopher Monceau, and we're gonna do crazy, spooky things. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's that seems to be the case. <laughs> the auto correct. Okay, there's no one on Instagram anymore. I'm sorry, but um. Yeah, Facebook people. Also, I want to put that link in there since everybody's here. Um, I can't put the link inside the Instagram one because Instagram doesn't let me do links on live, unfortunately. So here's the link. Murrow Secret. Check it out. People on Facebook. And it's my new, excuse me, 2022 Halloween special. Murrow Secret. Going to read the blurb in a couple seconds. But how's everybody Sunday? going getting notifications just all over the place thank you thank you yeah it is a uh, it's a halloween special um so this story uh, this is a reverse trigger warning for people <laughs> um this story is not violent at all so if you don't like um if you like weird stuff for your spooky season this is the story. Hello, Mikey Mike. Halloween. How you doing? Just dropped Mur Murrow Secret on Amazon, my new short story, a Halloween special. So it's part of the Mordred universe, my uh, spooky universe, bunch of stuff going on there. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I, uh, oh yeah, as I was saying, it's, um, it's pretty mild. Like the content is like, it's more like, mental stuff it's not really there's no like gore there's no blood like it's just weird so that's kind of what the that's the mood that i was feeling for the halloween special this year so don't there is a youngin in there there's a youngin don't worry nothing happens to him i don't write that kind of stuff um <clears throat> so he'll be fine um but like if you're so if you're like if that kind of stuff like triggers you nothing happens to him um because, like, again, I don't, I don't write that kind of stuff. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Well, I'm headed back to work. You can remove the hoodie now. 
I love it, but it's just too warm. It is like 80 degrees. But thank you so much, Chris, for the uh, for the sweat sweater. It'll it'll definitely work when I reach Boston because it'll actually be cold. So it'll feel great when I get when I hit Boston. But <laughs> it's too warm right now. So also speaking of um, gifts, birthday gifts, people are super nice. So I'm drinking today the what is it called? Boone's Coffee, and is the pumpkin pecan. I don't know if it's praline or praline, whatever it is. It is really good. I tried it the other day. Had it again. This is cold brew. Made it last night. Beast. But yeah, it is really good. Um, I did not, as you can see, it is black. I did not put anything in it because it's perfect on its own. Um, it's got the pumpkin, but it's got like, it's not pumpkin spice. It's like, it's like pumpkin pie. It's like, it's got that sweet, nutty flavor. And then it's like has pecan. You get the like the pecan under notes, which is like really good. I've re everything that Bones, when Bones does like savory flavors, like nuts, you can really taste it. Like it, they do a good job on that. Like it's better than most of their sweet stuff. So I, I really like it. It is very good. Thank you so much for getting me this. Uh, not the cup, the uh, the coffee. I got uh, Mary get, got me the uh, whole Nightmare Before Christmas Bones Holiday Collection, which I've never I've never tasted any of these flavors. They're all new. Apparently, they came out this year. Um, I was looking at it, but I was just like, oh, I don't know. Like, I just like I looked at it, and then I like put it on the back burner for a while, and then I just got this in the mail the other day. So, thank you so much. Would someone who doesn't drink coffee like that flavor? It sounds great. Yeah. So there is a coffee flavor that they that they you know just like the regular coffee. Um, I I think so because like if you drink tea, that's like it's very subtle. Um, but yeah, if you like drink tea or if you like drink anything like that, I I think it would be I think it's good. It definitely has the like. There's the coffee flavor that's kind of bitter. I think it's because I put a little too much in it, so that might be the case. If you get that sweet spot, though, you can like the flavors come out pretty well. So even if you don't like coffee, this is pretty good. So oh, thank you. Yeah, this was a gift from the other Chris, the American Chris. Um, he got me the Boston. Boston Celtics. So I'm now a Boston Celtics fan. Actually, for those of you who don't know, and I might have to take this off pretty soon because <laughs> it's hot. Um, but I used to play basketball in middle school and high school. Um, when I was younger, I played basketball. So like I basketball is my favorite sport. I just don't really watch it too much. But now I'm probably gonna watch it more just to keep on just to keep up to date with the season. <laughs> Because it's been a while since I've like I follow um, on my other Instagram page. I'm gonna have to take this off. Sorry. Um, on my other Instagram page, I follow the uh, Boston Celtics and uh, the Chicago Bulls. I follow them, and I follow I think the 76ers, which is like a New York team. I've been following them for a couple years, but yeah, I just. Ooh, okay, that feels better. This is much lighter. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait till the um, till the temperature actually drops. Like it's gonna drop tomorrow to like for you Americans, some with the majority of you, um, it's gonna drop to like seventy degrees. So like it's gonna be good because this past week it was like hovering around in the mid eighties. It was all right, but it was like uh, I don't know if I like that. So. Especially not this time of year. So, yeah, play basketball. I used to. I really should um, get, like, a basketball hoop or something. I don't know if I can go, like, there's probably, like, a 24-hour fitness or something that I could go to that I could just play basketball. Because, um, you know, it, it's it's also one of the few sports that you can do by yourself. 
<clears throat> if you don't have anybody else to play with. So that's a cool thing. Like you can't like play baseball by yourself. You can't play football by yourself. Um, but you could play basketball by yourself because all you need is a hoop and the ball and one person. So that's one of the things. Cause I don't know anybody out here. I mean, there's probably a bunch of people out here who like basketball, but I just don't talk to anybody out here. <laughs> so, I don't have any Albuquerque friends. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh Mary, I also tried the um the one with uh zero on it. What's that flavor called? The um oatmeal pie. That one was pretty good. Oatmeal cream pie, and that one was also very good. And it's really like the thing about Bones Coffee is that you can, at least me, you can taste like all the flavors. So like with that one, you can taste like there's the savory oatmeal, which I like. I like the taste of like dry oats, not cooked oats, dry oats, which is what it tastes like to me. And then you got the cream, which is a nice sweetness, kind of balances things out. So I like that. It's very tasty. Um, it didn't taste like a cookie as much as it tasted like like dry oats with some cream added to it, like some sweet cream, which is what I like because I don't like oatmeal. <laughs> I like oatmeal cookies. I just don't like the oatmeal. It's a texture thing. Like the taste, it was like fine. But, you know. Oh, you were in North Dakota in February. It was below zero and a kid was shooting hoops. It's driveway and it's Easter. Oh my God. <laughs> that is insane. Oh man, I was thinking about like the Hoosiers and stuff. I think that's like in what Indiana or something. <clears throat> the uh, the Hoosier people, <laughs> the people that play. I don't know if that's inappropriate to say anymore. I'm sorry if it is. Um, <clears throat> yeah, like uh, I remember this movie I was watching. It was called Hoosiers, and this guy was like on a basketball team, and he was just uh, you know, teaching. You know, it's it's the Every single sports movie that I've ever seen, it's always a sports team that's doing really bad. And then they are, by the end of the movie, they're like the best team because some new person comes on the team and makes them all, makes it better or something. Um, yeah, yeah, Hoosiers. Hoosiers is a good movie, yeah. Actually, what's funny is that what got me into basketball was a Sega game that I used to play when I was a kid. Um... I think it was like NBA 94 or something. And you got to play like as a, like a basketball player in the game. <laughs> and it was funny because like, you're not supposed to do this in basketball. I'm pretty sure, but there's like, it, it's a game in the nineties. So you have people, you're able to push other people. <laughs> and that was always for some reason, funny to me when I was younger. <laughs> but yeah, it was really cool when I played because I played basketball. The first time I played like on an actual team, was when I was like 12 years old and I played, I played basketball and we were like, um, <clears throat> back then it was on, on an all girls team, but I was like, so it was like really fun. Cause I like got to, we went to the rec center like every Saturday, I think they had different games. And then we had like a competition game. I wasn't a very good player, but I liked doing it. There was, I don't know why it, it's just one of those things. I just, like to play i like to watch it when i can again i don't watch it as often as i should um i don't like i don't watch sports a lot just in general it's kind of like i i've never been drawn to watching sports like religiously i'll watch it and um i don't watch football by myself but i'll watch it with family members or friends um but yeah it's it's just funny <laughs> i wanted to wear one of my like choker necklaces just to, like throw people off and be like I'm a sporty person that's also wearing a goth necklace. <laughs> I think that'd be funny. I'd confuse some people. <laughs> Very good coffee, though. Yeah, because recently I've been like drinking coffee from a bottle because I've been kind of like lazy and not wanting to make coffee. So I just like pour it. And then with those coffees, of course, you have to put something in it. So I have a bunch of like, um, I got like a pumpkin spice latte, like creamer. So I've been using that, um, you know, just to get in the spooky season. Um, again, it was this 
one, I was going in with the expectation that it was going to be super spicy like all the other ones, but it was very different. It kind of tasted like a, a very, like, thin down version of that, like, canned milk, evaporated milk, if you all know what I'm talking about. It's like, it's sweet, but it's not as sweet as evaporated milk. It's kind of like a cut version of that, so... That was pretty nice. It was very mild. It wasn't too spicy. What are you doing over there? It's funny. Um, Grimm's obsessed with paper bags. So he, he gets on top of the bag. He does the biscuits, and then he lies down on the paper bag instead of all the uh, all the other like soft blankets that I got for him. <laughs> I have a nightmare before Christmas blanket that I got for like Christmas a couple years, like last year. No, a couple years ago, like in 2020. And he loves that blanket. That's like his favorite blanket. So I let like it's his blanket now. But then the other day, my mom came over from California and she brought a bunch of stuff and there was a plastic bag. And then he went over to like the plastic bags and just like just sat on it. So that was funny. Would the bones pe pumpkin pecan be good with Bailey's or Kahlua? That is a very good question. There is a um, bones coffee that would go really good with Bailey's. It, it's not in this collection. It's called the Irish Cream. That would be perfect with Bailey's um, because they, they mix it with Bailey's all the time. So that would be pretty good. I think Kahlua would be pretty good for the, the pumpkin pecan because it's like, for me at least, the pecan flavor comes out, like all the nutty flavors come out whenever I drink bones. It's like, I think that would be pretty good with the Kahlua. I haven't had Kahlua in a long time. Yeah, it's been a while. Does that have like the caramel flavor too? I remember it having like a kind of caramel sweet flavor. I don't know. That might be something else actually. Like it's a coffee liqueur taste, and then there might be some, maybe it's just sweet, <laughs> and maybe I'm just thinking that it tastes like caramel. Um, I might also be thinking about something else. There was a bottle of Kahlua in uh, in the kitchen that I had last year, and apparently that bottle had been there for like a very long time, like before I even came to live in this house. So. Have it a couple times, I don't remember. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it would be pretty good with that. Um, normally, I don't spice, like, my coffee too much. Like, sometimes I do. Um, it depends. Like, I used to spice my coffee a lot, and it tastes pretty good sometimes. Like, it, it's nice to get, like, a, a dual buzz on that thing so that's pretty nice um but yeah i haven't done it in a while because i don't i haven't had a liquor in a while i just i don't know i just haven't been feeling it um usually around the holidays is when i tend to drink liquor more i don't know it's like the cold season is like good for that like it might be because i run so warm and the alcohol is like warms you up anyway so <laughs> if i'm gonna be warm it's gonna be during the dead of winter <laughs> Check a few things. I put I, I forgot to put the filter on my uh Instagram. My instant gram. So there's a bunch of filters that I've been playing with recently. It's it's really fun. The old Instagram filters. Nobody's even on there. I just like play around. Okay. Wait, one more. I do have my uh whatchamacallit. What was I going to say? Okay, so I told you guys about the uh, Murrow Secrets coming out. Um, so basically for the rest of this month, I'm just going to be world building for NaNoWriMo, which is the uh, National Novel Writing Month. I'm just going to go out there and just going to try and make the world for the final novel and the Calder's Vice, just make it more like flesh it out a little bit more because I was writing earlier 
like a previous draft and there's some new stuff that I put inside there that I just want to like elaborate on and just have a little bit more backstory on. So I'll be working on that and mostly in October, the first couple of weeks, like first half of October, world building, second half vacation, and then will be actual NaNoWriMo. So I have about three weeks until I'm supposed to have all that stuff done. So which is plenty of time if I'm just world building, because I got a bunch of like, um, as the kids say, adulting things that I need to do. So it's kind of good that I'll be taking a little bit of a break. It's it's just mostly going to be promo and world building. That's pretty much what I'm going to be doing for the next three weeks, um, <clears throat> which is pretty light labor. I had the opportunity to send in a submission for a Bizarro magazine, but I missed the due date because I was focused more on Moral Secret getting that out because, you know, Amazon, they're kind of brutal. And if you don't get things out by the due date, which was um, September 28th, which I obviously I got everything done in time. Um, but they won't let you like do a pre-order ever again if you miss that deadline. <laughs> so it's just like I had to get that in. That was a priority and like a bunch of other stuff for, was going on. So but yeah, I think from here out, um, as far as my writing stuff will be going, I'll just be world building, just like probably sharing stuff to the Starving Artist page because I really need to get back into that and be a, uh, be a functional member of that group. I haven't been in there in a while. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, more stuff to see for that. Hopefully I can do some more drawings too. Um, just stuff. Uh, let's see. There is um, So in Divinorum, it's mostly focused on the afterlife of the characters and there's some there's going to be some like shinto stuff in there kind of like ancient japanese lore in there which i've never done before which i need to research more so i don't um screw up with that uh i'm kind of nervous about that part i've never written anything um with asian influences like at all so like i'm kind of like oh this will be interesting so that'll be nice there's a little thing in my nose <laughs> But yeah, that'll be for, yeah, next three weeks. So um, pretty much I'm just going to be promoting my all my Halloween stuff, which is uh, for those of you on uh, Instagram and Facebook, you know, this is my Halloween special that I released last year, which is uh, a bit longer than the, uh, this year's one. Also, I made the cover for this, and I also made the cover for Murrow Secret. I've been kind of doing my own covers for a while. Saves me money, and I think it's nice to have my own style, like, featured on my books. So that's really cool. Yeah, I was, like, I was working on it, and it's not as detailed as I would have liked. I kind of, like, I probably should have focused more on it. But as far it is, as it is now, I'm pretty happy with it, with how it came out. The only issue, as far as coloring is concerned, is that on my iPad, where I was making it uh, on the Procreate app, it's a little bit darker than what I was wanting. Like the like the main brown that you see on on Murrow, who's the, who's the big brown creature. He is a little bit darker than he's supposed to be. So like, I'll probably go and fix that eventually. Like right now, I'm just gonna like let it sit. I'm like, I'm I'm done with that for a little bit. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's okay though. I'm not too, too mad about it. Um, otherwise I think it, I think it came out pretty well considering like my lack of like artistic education. <laughs> um, but yeah, all of that I did, I did, let's see, I'm looking at the cover now. Um, pretty much all of it was done in Procreate. Like I did, like there's a ton of layers on there that I, that I made and I traced over some vines because it was kind of difficult to do the vines on my own. So I kind of traced that and I use like, there's, you can put text editing inside procreate, which is cool. I made things a little curvy, made the uh, M and the T stand out a little bit more. But yeah. All of that stuff was done on procreate. I had to do the face of Josepho, which is the, uh, the spider eye guy. I had to do his on a separate document altogether 
because his stuff had a bunch of layers on it. It has a lot more detail for how small his face is. I'm just like, <laughs> but if you like zoom in or something, you can see all the detail on his face. I was pretty happy with it, with how that came out too. So yeah, he came out pretty good. Um, again, the detailing on that is a little fuzzy. It was weird because when I transferred it over to from one pro create like document to the next one to make a whole new layer, it was a little fuzzy. So I had to fix that. That was interesting. I think it, no, it's because I had to remove the background on another app. I had to take it to Canva, remove the background, and then have it come back to the iPad because I, the Canva app is on my computer and my Procreate app is on the iPad. So I had to like do a little switching around. That was pretty cool. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, how that came out. Again, for those of you who are, uh, there is a youngin on the uh, in the book, but again, he is nothing happens to him. There's no blood. There's no gore. There's no like creepy. Like there are creepy things, but it's like not like that kind of creepy. <laughs> um, it's not disturbing. It's just kind of. It's just like I wanted to take a break from like. Um, the violence that I have in my Caldera's Vice universe, like there's a lot of like, cause you know, there's gangs and stuff. It's more actiony. Oh, hi. There's more people on Instagram. Hello. I'm talking about Murrow's Secret, which is my Halloween special. It's available now on Amazon. So I can't put a link inside Instagram. Sorry, y'all. I, uh, there should be a link in my bio. I'll have to change that. Yeah. And they're gone. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like, I did not have a lot of lot prepared today because I was just going to take it easy today. Kind of just give you all an update on the writing things going on happening in my, in my life. And I have Lord Samhain, which I updated the cover for. I am very happy with how that came out. It's It looks pretty good, um, a lot better. I, I also drew, I kind of did the same thing. I uh, drew by hand. I drew a picture of Rago, who's the character on the uh, cover of the Lord Samhain. I drew him. I colored him on Procreate. And I put, like, I took off the background for that and put it on to the old cover. And then I just fix up the fonts. Super easy. I like that. Yeah, that's pretty much what I did for that. That was pretty fun. Um, again, I do have more Halloween art that I still like need to sell. So got to start slinging that again. <laughs> pretty much October is just going to be me promoting myself and talking about the trip and whatnot. So <clears throat> I'm a little bit nervous about it because I haven't been traveling in a while. I'm like, it's kind of like... I don't even know why I'm nervous. I'm like, pretty much have everything finished. But Are you doing anything special for your birthday? Maybe making a special dinner? That is a good question. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. Um, I might order something because I'm kind of too far away from all of the like stuff, like all the restaurants around me. So sometimes I order. Um, I got Grubhub co co connected to my Prime my Amazon Prime, so like I don't have to pay the delivery fee, which is nice. Um, so I might do that because I'm an okay cook, but there's, you know, the restaurant is always way better than my cooking, <laughs> like far superior to how I cook. I cannot cook very well. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I might do that because um, most of the stuff that I normally do on Sundays, which is filming TikToks and stuff like that, um, I might just push that over to Monday because I just I just want to take the day to relax because I do have like a side job. I got a couple days before I can relax before that. Um, I got work on Tuesday and maybe Thursday. So I'm just finagling around with all my gigs and stuff. So I think today would be a nice day to just like do nothing and probably just watch movies all day or something. Spooky movies, probably. So. Yeah, I'm pretty much the only uh, 
no one else is here in the house as far as I'm aware. So like, that's like, yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> I'll probably just like hang out at the house. Um, that's the thing about not having a car. I can't just like drive over to a, uh, a restaurant. So there's one down the street. That's pretty nice. I might go there. It is a, like, it's a really like, I don't want to say hipster restaurant, which I tend to like those usually. The Californian me loves hipster restaurants. Um, this one's really good because it has like vegan options if I want that. If I want something lighter, it has like really good, like everything's like locally sourced and all that. It has like, um, like they serve local coffee, like everything there is like really, like really good. Um, and it's like a 15 minute walk from my house, like maybe not even that. So like, that's not even that much of a walk. So that would be pretty nice. <clears throat> I might do that. Um, there's a restaurant called El Pinto, which is another restaurant that's even closer that I've never been to. It has Mexican food. So I'm like, I'm not big on Mexican food. Um, I think it's because I've just had it all my life and I'm just like, eh, it's all right. Um, I've never been to this one before, so I might do that. There's also a really nice grocery store called the Co-op, the Manzanilla Co-op, which has like, when you hear Co-op, you probably, especially people on the West Coast, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, it's just one of those, you know, like hippie stores. <clears throat> has really good, like, they have like stuff that they bake there on site. And I've had their baked goods and they're really, really good. So I might try some of that. That stuff is really good. It has like, um, there's like this brownie that I got and it was one of the best brownies that I've ever had. And it was like gluten-free too. And I was like, I was surprised how good it was for like, I, I thought it was like a regular brownie. Um, <laughs> but I was just like, wow, this is like a gluten-free brownie that tastes really, that's like that, got that fudgy consistency. So like, I like fudgy brownies. I don't like the cake brownies. So. Mexican food is just food if that's what you grew up with at home. Yeah, that's pretty much how I look at it. It's just like, uh, it's just like, like kind of like, why would I go to a restaurant for that? Like, like I know a lot of people who love Mexican food and I'm just like, that's cool on you. That's like, that's, that's great. Um, I've only met one person who doesn't like Mexican food. Um, I guess it's really popular, especially in California. You got people cause you got like, like the legit hole in the wall, really good Mexican places. Like, I'm not saying that it's like bad food. I'm just like, it's just like, yeah, it's all right to me. It's just like, I don't like the only time I've ever craved Mexican food was when I was going to college up in NorCal where the Mexican food up there it's not the same. Like you can definitely taste it. Like the further South you go, like the more authentic it is from the people that have like told me. And from like my experience, like in California, at least the Mexican food in New Mexico, I don't like it here. Like I've been to several Mexican restaurants here. I don't like it. Um, and it's not because it doesn't taste authentic necessarily. It just has a different taste to it that doesn't agree with me. Um, <clears throat> again, there's a couple of places here that I like that serves like Mexican food. Like there's a place called, uh, what's it called? Church Street Cafe, which is pretty, my family loves that place. They go, every time they visit me, they go to that place. And they, I basically just get the enchiladas every time. Because the enchiladas there have something I've never had before inside an enchilada. They have ground beef inside the enchilada that I've never had. So I liked that. It's ground beef, but it's also like, and this is going to sound very American. <laughs> well, I don't know of that. But like it's, you can tell it's deep fried in, what's that stuff called? Lard. Is deep fried in lard. So I only eat that whenever I go there because it tastes really good. It reminds me of when I used to eat trepas when I was a kid. Um, you got that lard. I don't know if you've ever tasted lard, but you got that lard kind of gamey kind of taste. And I like that taste. Um, it reminds me of when I was little. So I'm like, oh, okay. I like that taste. It's great. Um, 
So like that's the only that's usually what I order when I eat like when when my family goes out there. It's kind of like a family thing. We go there every time, like a family tradition. We go there every year, so or every time we come out. Because my mom came out recently for my birthday, and that's where we went. Because I know that like she likes to go there. So we went there. I got the uh, again. I got the enchiladas with the uh, ground beef inside with the uh, green sauce. <clears throat> the sauce there at that restaurant is actually pretty good. Like the green and red sauce, I normally don't like like red sauce, but this red sauce is nice and like um, smoky. It's got that nice smoky flavor. It's really good. But yeah, I've been eating like this summer. I've been eating a lot of like Asian food. Kind of like, um, well, it's not, I've been eating a lot of poke, which is like a Hawaiian dish. That's like a bowl of like rice, or in my case, I, I do tortilla chips because it's a poke restaurant that's like a mix of Hawaiian and South American influences, which is like, to me, that's mind blowing. It was delicious. I basically had it every weekend <laughs> this summer because I was working that job. So I was able to afford it, but you know, it's, it's pretty expensive when it's delivered to you, but you know, <clears throat> but yeah, it was pretty good. And uh, it's mostly, it was like, it's got like the sushi influences. It's got the um, South America. I think one of the things was chimchurri, which I think is like a Brazilian like sauce. It's like green. It's like savory. It's really, it's really good. It's like savory and sour. It's just like really good. Um, so I had that a lot during the summer. I, it's a really good summer dish because it's nice and cool. Because the rice is usually cooled, um, depending on where you get it from. But the rice isn't hot, but it's not cold. It's kind of like a, like a nice, like it's like room temperature rice. So it's like for summertime, it's like nice and refreshing. And then you got the raw fish in there, like the salmon and stuff like that. And then you can put cucumbers and like all of that stuff that's really good for the summertime. So that's pretty much most of what I ate during the summer. I tried to make my own, but it was not very successful. It's a uh, poke is pretty difficult to make. So at least for me, I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not the best uh, in the kitchen. So <laughs> but yeah, that's something that I could do. Something that I can eat for my birthday. All right. Instagram has been having people poke in and out. You know, the cool thing about um, the recordings that never happened on my other page, on my other Instagram page, was that people actually like the live stream, which is awesome. I get people like I I, I turn in, look at my um, like my analytics and stuff. And then the next week I got like six or seven likes on my live stream. So I'm just like. That's awesome. So uh, people that watch the live stream recording, thank you. So that's really nice. I just um because I know I can't see who who watches my live streams when they're finished. Like I can see who's on right now, or I can see how many people are on. I can't see who it is, but there's like two people on right now on my Facebook live stream. There's nobody in the Instagram right now. And I can see it and it's pretty cool, but like afterwards when it's all like recorded and everything. I can't see it like on either one. I, I'm just not aware of like who sees the recording. So I'm not as worried about that as I used to be. I'm just like, as long as like people like it on, at least on Instagram, that's great. So I, I'm like happy about that. I am not too crazy about like what happens on Facebook anymore. I'm just like, whatever happens on Facebook happens. <laughs> I don't know what's even going on with Facebook anymore. I pretty much just scroll a little bit and then I'm just like, these are the same memes over and over again. And I'm just like, okay, this person is doing this. Awesome. Um, that's pretty much like why I go on Facebook anymore. I'm just like, as you can see on my regular page, there's pretty much nothing. So um, other than a bunch of very happy, happy birthday posts, which is awesome. So. Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing. I, again, today's stream was just going to be a very, very low key stream. I wasn't expecting a huge turnout, um, and I didn't. I just don't have a lot of lot going on other than my uh, author stuff, just to let you guys know. 
But yeah, Merle's Secret is out. So uh, thank you so much for the people that got it. So thank you. Um, again, I'll keep on posting that till Halloween, basically. Um, it is a Halloween story. So I've noticed, um, so I've been reading Bizarro stuff recently. That's kind of been my thing lately. When I do read, I haven't been reading a lot. But I read Bizarro short stories, and I'm seeing, like, not all Bizarro that's accepted is like violent or like gory or like anything like that I, I mean i have nothing against that but i don't write gore too well i'm not i don't push the gore boundaries that's kind of required to get people hooked into horror from what i've read because i feel like a lot of people like in the horror genre they they like 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 disturbing stuff gory stuff and I can write that to a degree, but I also like to write things that aren't like gory at all. They're just weird. Like I write, I, um, the latest one that I wrote um, that I'm probably just going to publish on Wattpad or something was called The Scab Eater. And that was kind of gory. It does get gory, but it's more like weird because there's this guy who's called Reese. And ever since he was a kid, he's been, he picks out a skin and he's just like, it's just an OCD thing for him and he's had problems with it. And it's just like, it consumes him and it's a very like, it's like an addiction. He can't stop. And then creatures from another dimension start popping up in his world. And they're also scab eaters, but they've like progressed into the scab eater uh, dimension. So that's pretty much what goes on with that. There is like gore in it, but that's like, it's kind of to be expected because it's like someone who picks out their skin and grows stuff like that. <laughs> so gross. I linked it in a comment I made in Facebook groups, books of horror group under a post asking what we have on our TBR for October. Thank you so much. Oh my God. Thank you. That is awesome. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, if a lot of people there were like, but thank you so much, as much exposure as this little story can get. So it's only 5,000 words. It's actually, it's very short. Um, <clears throat> my short story collection, I think is like maybe 20,000, 15,000. So thank you. That is much appreciated. <clears throat> but yeah, that's, um. so with Murrow's Secret, it's basically about a kid. His name's Josefo. He's like eight years old and he pretty much there's a wall that's around this town it's called festo the town and the wall is called muro and it's a uh, it's a mordred in this universe so basically what they do what their job is what their like their function in this universe is to basically be grim reapers so there this whole town is surrounded by a giant grim reaper and these people in this town um Pretty much, they try and avoid the the wall every year. They try, like, because the wall itself can't do anything. Like, Murrow, he can't move. He can't, like, his branches don't reach out to get people. So what he does is that he releases a pheromone. Like, I don't say this in the book, but, like, that's what he does. He releases a pheromone to get people interested in going towards him on their own volition. Like, there's no, like, forceful thing that he's doing to get them to eat them, basically. He's just kind of, like, very patiently waiting for them to, like, for their guard to get let down. And this year, like, they've been, um, <clears throat> I don't want to give too much away, but, like, this is the year that people's, like, psyches are very, like, not on guard at all they're just kind of like going through the motions like it's a it's a tradition each year that they honor the harvest god which is basically the god of life and they're saying like oh thank you for saving us every year and all that stuff and then they kind of like you can kind of tell that they're going through the motions they like oh come on let's just take our little treats to the harvest god give him some candy <laughs> Um, and just, they're just playing games. They're like dunking heads in the apple bobbing shit like that. Just very fall activities. Just like, you know, just ha ha, like, just like not really paying attention. And 
Josefo, the little boy, he's just every year he's just been really curious about like what is beyond Murrow, and that's like the whole thing of the story. That's like the meat of the, of the story is that like Murrow, Murrow secrets. That's why that's what he uses to draw people in to basically kill and eat them. Um, is that like he's saying like I have things that you can't see on like in this little town of yours. But the only way to see it is for you to cross through my branches and you might die and I might eat you, <laughs> but you just got to take that risk, you know? <laughs> um, but pretty much that's, that's what it's about. Like Joseph, is just like, there's a um, antagonist again. I don't have too many like antagonists in my story, but this guy who's saying like, he's called the ritual leader. His name is Petro. And he's like, you guys, aren't supposed to go towards the wall. You know, it's going to eat you, right? Like he does that all the time. He warns people, Hey, like this is what Moro does. That's like, he's put on this earth to eat you. And as long as we ignore him, we'll be fine. But Moro, you know, he's getting hungry and then he sends out these chemicals in the air that he's just like, like come to me. Um, and he does get a few people. I don't want to give too much away, but like he does get a few people and people start wondering like, oh, like what is beyond Murrow? Because they can't see beyond Murrow's wall. There's this giant wall in this little town. They can't see beyond it. There's a lot of stuff beyond it that's not him. He's actually pretty narrow, like relatively speaking, when it comes to like the actual world surrounding these people. But they don't know that. They've been in that wall for forever since they were kids and then generations beyond that like none of the people in that world know what's beyond there um and some people get super curious and they get lured in and some people like live for a very long time so um yeah that's basically it though there's no again there's no like there's no gore there's no like creepy uh, like abuse or anything like that like there's it is a very like kids could read this story like you could have a child <laughs> read this story and they would be fine there's no profanity or anything there it's a very like anyone could read this so it's more about the spookiness and the mystery behind what Morrow is hiding from people so yeah i i had a fun time writing it it was it's been a while since i've like written anything like new like i've done like recent stuff i get like well, i guess i'll take that back because i have written stuff <laughs> but uh more just stuff i have not written in a while so i do have plans for what i'm going to be doing with the um stuff the next more just stuff and it's come to my attention that i'm more likely to get like draw in my audience if i put up my stuff on wattpad like the first chapter, I'm not going to put the whole thing. Um, just to have people be aware of it and like have people reading it. Because on Wattpad, I actually had people, like a lot of people reading my stuff. I'm not sure why I decided <laughs> to stop posting on there because that was actually pretty good. I got a lot of readers and I got like high rankings on there for like my niches and stuff. So I'm going to get back to that. Um, I think that'd be really good just like i don't know how far it'll go as far as actual sales but building an audience it's pretty good for so the sales part is a lot trickier but. all right we're coming along at 12 50. does anyone have questions for me before i start packing up <laughs> that's a really good coffee by the way i just the nutty flavor makes it. I don't know why. It just makes it taste really good. I guess I like savory coffee. Oh. Savory coffee with a little bit of creamer. That's good. I don't like putting creamer in Moe's coffee, though, because, you know, <clears throat> if you brew right, it's already got the flavor in there. So don't even have to have to worry about that. So, But I am going to shut up shop for Instagram. So Instagram, thank you so much for watching. See next week, Instagram. Okay. Ooh. Hang on. <laughs> technical difficulty. Okay.
share. I don't drink coffee, but I think I must try this. If you don't drink coffee for the caffeine, I think they do have some caffeine-free options. I don't know if they have it in these flavors. Um, but yeah, I think um, it's pretty good, like even just a little bit. Put that up there. There we go. I'll edit that later, I suppose. Um, so that's for Instagrams, all good to go. You can just take that off, I guess. You guys can see my uh, little setup here. <laughs> but yeah, it was pretty good. The coffee. It's a good birthday. It's not even over yet. So, but yeah, I'm thinking that today I might just have something like maybe some delivery food or some stuff like that. Because, um, again, I don't want to, like, either way I'm going to be spending a lot of money if I'm going to, like, go someplace. So, because I like the buses are pretty much all down because it's Sunday. <laughs> I don't know why, but for some reason, like Albuquerque kind of shuts down on Sundays. <laughs> I don't know. I guess like everybody needs a rest. So, can't make people work on Sunday. So, <clears throat> but yeah, Murrow Secret, I'm going to post that once more. Get that spread it around um, on the social medias. So, Let's see. All right, cool. You got the link. That's the link right there. I am going to shorten that link because that is really long. Oh, my God. Uh, you can shorten that link via the magic of the Internet. <laughs> it's weird how that works. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, make sure I did that. Cool. All right, so um, next week... I'm going to play this by ear because I am leaving on October 25th and I'll be with Chris Monceau. So we're probably going to be doing like double live streams together and stuff like that. So that'll be pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much about it. Um, I'll, I'm planning for next week to be live. So uh, catch me on the uh, live streaming on there. And uh, anyone got anything to say before I, uh, before I be quiet. <laughs> oh, my teeth. I need to drink more milk. <clears throat> oh, that's not good. Okay. All right, y'all. You have a great Sunday, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.